welcome to another edition of How Worcester Works. This episode we're going to be exploring and learning about Worcester's Hope Cemetery. We're going to hear from uh, one of our former mayors uh, and a professor at the College of the Holy Cross, John Anderson, who's going to tell us a little bit about the history of Hope Cemetery, some of the interesting people who are buried here uh, at Hope Cemetery. Thanks, Ed. Hope Cemetery is uh, a wonderful kind of living museum of Worcester history. Uh, you can find a number of people buried here whose lives helped to explain why this city was founded, why this city grew in the 19th century, and why this city is so important in the 20th and 21st century. One of the things that's most impressive, I think, about Hope Cemetery are the number of important Worcester people who are buried here. The people who made the city the great industrial center it was in the 19th century. One of them is Matthew Whittall. Um, Whittall uh, started a carpet mill right at College Square, taking advantage of, of the river that was there, uh, and built uh, quite a, a successful carpet business. He had trained in England. He had been in Kidderminster, England, um, and learned the carpet manufacturing process. Came to Worcester with most of it in his head, and then began to develop uh, uh, his, his plant here. His carpets were extraordinary. Uh, they were the carpets used in the White House, in the major hotels in the country. Uh, at College Square, he not only built his um, fairly, fairly wide uh, um, factory, but he also built his own mansion, which was across the street. That's in that area that is now pretty much a shopping center at the corner of Cambridge and Southbridge Streets. Uh, he was an Anglican in England, so an Episcopalian when he came to the United States, and he built a little church called St. Matthew's, uh, appropriately named for his patron saint. Um, and um, when the Carnegie money for public libraries became available, he donated the site next to St. Matthew's Church for a Carnegie Branch Library, that South Worcester Branch Library. Um, so he, he had a, a, a major impact on the city. He also was very English, even uh, when he had become an American citizen. And um, when Queen Victoria celebrated her Golden Jubilee as Queen, he had a uh, major event here for that. He also helped sponsor a rugby uh, team in, in Worcester. So there was, and a cricket team too. So he, he uh, played a major part. One of the interesting things about Whittall's grave I've always found is this spectacular uh, gravestone, which has uh, the angel uh, with the, the horn, uh, sounding the horn and raising someone up. Uh, it's, it's extraordinary in its height uh, and in, in the, the uh, sculpture on the front of it. But it's also extraordinary because if the trees weren't in leaf and we looked in that direction, we would see the Woodall Mills. You can stand here uh, in, the, in the winter in particular, look across and see where the mills are. So I've always thought, and this is probably just pure speculation, that what we have here is a man checking on his factory to make sure it's working even though he's not physically present. There are a number of other industrialists in this same area. Uh, the Morgan family, much of the Morgan family is buried here. Uh, their company, Morgan Construction Company at Lincoln Square was only bought by a foreign company within the last few years. Austin Christie is buried down here and a number of others in this immediate area. But one of the interesting burials in this area is one that's just over here. So I'll take a little walk uh, and I'll go in this direction. I have to watch out that I don't trip on some of these little stones that are raised here. One of the things that we see as we, we pass by here 
uh, is the, the gravestone of uh, Wyman Gordon, who was one of the founders of Wyman Gordon. It gets a little confusing with the similar names, but his, his burial site is, is right over there. And as you walk around, you do see a number of uh, famous Worcester names. One of, the interesting, one of the interesting graves in uh, Hope Cemetery is the, that of uh, William Chamberlain Porter, which is right here. It's this massive stone. Uh, he's interesting because he was one of the people who died when the Titanic went down in 1912. Uh, his body was recovered. Uh, it was identified from the jewelry on his hand and from other things that were with him. Um, it was brought to Halifax, Nova Scotia, and then brought by train to Worcester and buried uh, here. He was a, a Worcester man. He had a company that made lasts, which are the things that are used to help uh, make shoes. Um, he uh, uh, unfortunately uh, took this trip to, to England. Um, on the, sh on the way back, as we all know, the Titanic hit an iceberg and went down, and he was one of the, the victims of, of that collision. Another of the interesting burials in this same area is of a man named Charles Hansen. Uh, he's about 50 feet in back of uh, the Whittall grave and about 20 feet uh, away from the, the uh, Porter grave. Uh, Charles Hansen is, it's noted here on his uh, gravestone, he was the first Swedish settler in Worcester in 1868. Uh, many groups uh, buried their dead in Hope Cemetery before they established cemeteries of their own. So there are now two Swedish cemeteries in Worcester, old Swedish, new Swedish cemetery. But when Hansen died, uh, they were not uh, yet developed. Uh, so he is buried here. Uh, there is also a, a section of Hope Cemetery that has a lot of Jewish graves. And they were, uh, Jews were interned here before a Jewish cemetery was established. There is a section of Muslim graves uh, from the 19th century. Uh, and there are uh, many uh, uh, graves of people of Eastern Orthodox traditions. Uh, so the cemetery has a, uh, it's, it's like a mirror of Worcester. You see industrialists, you see the immigrants, you see the ordinary people all in the same area, much as the city itself. One of the most impressive individuals uh, buried in Hope Cemetery is Eli Thayer who has a number of firsts to his credit. Uh, he founded the first uh, collegiate institution for women in Worcester, Oriad Castle. Uh, he also was a major figure in the uh, anti-slavery movement in the 1850s and is uh, seen by many people as, the, as it says on his grave, uh, the author of the Kansas Crusade. Thayer, ultimately served a couple of terms in Congress, and then his son, uh, John, later served a, uh, a term or two in, in Congress. So he's a, an extraordinary figure, uh, well known by American historians. As you know, Hope was established in the early 1850s as a city cemetery. And it, that alone says a lot about Worcester's history. As downtown developed more and more, uh, the need for a cemetery meant looking further and further afield. Uh, Hope is described as a, a rural or a garden cemetery. Uh, so it's, it's like a park. Yeah, it's very nice and uh contemplative environment uh, for a cemetery. One of the nice things about the cemetery is that um, there, there is a supporting group called the Friends of Hope Cemetery, which is a private voluntary group. Uh, its president is Ann Nelson, Cookie Nelson. 
One of the things that the Friends of Hope Cemetery has done is to provide some signs and to make make the cemetery uh, easier to understand and, and to help explain what parts of the cemetery represent. There is a uh, sign at the entrance to the uh, cemetery that describes the cemetery. But this sign in particular refers to uh, the burial ground that uh, was on Mechanic Street in Worcester, just about where the DCU Center is now. That was a, a burial ground. That's the city's second burial ground. The first one was on the Common, and actually a lot of the graves from the Common uh, were uh, removed and they are buried here. Uh, but the Mechanic Street burial ground was a much larger one. Uh, this is a portrait or painting of the Mechanic Street area. Uh, and there's a little map that shows where it was uh, between the railroad tracks and, and Mechanic Street, which is pretty much the, the site of the centrum. And the, uh, this describes not only the, the burial grounds, uh, but also the, the nature of the stones. These are those slate stones, most of them, uh, which usually carry that you know, motif of the urn and the uh, um, willows. Uh, but if you look around, you, you can read most of these and you find uh, you know, that the lifespan in some cases was very short uh, and in other cases extraordinarily long, even by today's standards. Uh, but it's impressive to see, see all of these uh, taken from Mechanic Street. It's not all of Mechanic Street uh, burials. Uh, some of those are uh, now at Rural Cemetery, including Isaiah Thomas. These cannon were moved to Worcester from, uh, I think it was Charleston, they were in a Navy yard, but they symbolized the, the peace that followed the Civil War. Uh, so they're inverted, they're turned down, and the cannonballs are, are there. Uh, these are graves of many of the men from Worcester who served in the Civil War, uh, and they've all been decorated for uh, Memorial Day. And uh, there are other uh, graves across the way. Um, pretty soon, the um, Friends of Hope Cemetery, which is a uh, private voluntary organization, uh, will erect a sign similar to one that uh, describes a, another part of the cemetery, which will talk about Worcester and the Civil War and the graves uh, here. Um, there are, it's just an amazing number of people from Worcester who served in the, in the Civil War. Uh, many of them later belonged to the GAR, the Grand Army of the Republic, and uh, the Grand Army of the Republic often bought cemetery areas and then their members, as they died uh, after the war, were buried there. John, now the, the men who are buried here, and I assume they're all men, the Civil War. Well, there, <coughs> there are a couple of women, not, not in this immediate section, but there are, who had served as nurses, um, particularly in, in the war. Now, so these are folks who perhaps died in battle as well as people who came back and then died after the war yeah, was over. Yeah, most of these would be GAR members, so they would have died after the war. They would have been veterans. So in effect, it's a kind of veterans um, uh, group. There is another group over here, uh, and I've always been impressed by, by that because I found my own name on one of the gravestones. That's, that's going to be but startling. Not, not a relative, <laughs> but uh, uh, a Sergeant John Anderson was uh, killed in, in the war. Uh, but it's, if you stand here and look uh, at, the, uh, at this area, uh, just see the flags. Uh, and then the, the cannon turned upside down. It, it's striking, yeah. you know, and it gives you a sense of, of the war. In 1860, Worcester had about 18,000 people uh, and uh, thousands of, of young Worcester men and a handful of Worcester women went and served in, in the war. So.
anyone can come to the cemetery and visit. And if they stop at the office, they can pick up a brochure which describes the cemetery and gives you an indication of where some of the most significant burials in the cemetery are. It's a handsome color illustrated brochure. In addition to that, the uh, Friends of Hope Cemetery sponsor walking tours of the cemetery, uh, usually one in the spring and one in the fall. Uh, and those tours uh, do different parts of the cemetery and help to uh, bring it to life, so to speak, to, to make it a, a living testimony to, to Worcester's past. Uh, it's a wonderful place to visit for the topography. It's a wonderful place to visit for the horticulture. The trees here are gorgeous. Uh, it's a treasure uh, that everyone should be part of. And if you really get concerned about the cemetery, one of the ways you can show your concern is by joining the Friends of Hope Cemetery uh, and their membership applications are available in the cemetery office. I want to thank John Anderson, uh, former mayor of Worcester, uh, professor at the College of the Holy Cross, who, and a member of the Friends of Hope Cemetery, who really uh, allowed us to understand and appreciate some of the history of uh, the cemetery, as well as some of the people who were buried here. I mean, it's fact, like this woman is from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. She's a teacher who's doing a program about Dr. Goddard and wrote to the cemetery to get information uh, for her class in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So that's the relevance to, you know, what we're doing here to protect this history, protect these records, to make them accessible, uh, not only for the care of the folks who are buried here, uh, but really our role in protecting history. Uh, and who knows when somebody's going to be looking for a piece of this history uh, to tell a story, uh, to have us better understand who we are and where we came from.